Hey everybody, my name is Kristen. I'm a fitness and sports instructor here at CFD Edmonton. Uh, today I'm going to be taking you through a full body strength class. Um, for this class, if you have um, dumbbells, kettlebells, a barbell, or any sort of makeshift weights that you hold, whether it be um, a weighted backpack or something like that, you can use whatever you have for this workout. Um, if you're just kind of saving this workout in your back pocket for maybe a later date, that's 110% fine too. I'm going to go over some um, technique cues that maybe you can implement into your training um, at a later date. Uh, make sure that you have water for today and obviously some tunes um, if you you know feel like getting a little bit more jazzy. I'm not going to be playing any music just for the sake of you being able to, to hear me and for me being able to uh, take you through this class. So, of course, we got to do a little disclaimer before we get started. So, in response to COVID-19, PSP is offering virtual fitness to Canadian Armed Forces members. We invite all participants who are not Canadian Armed Forces members to consult the Get Active questionnaire of the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology and its reference document. Um, once again, today is a full body strength class. So, we're going to be hitting four of our major muscle groups today. We're going to go over a couple technique cues. So if you haven't really been working out, you know, over um, the extent uh, of quarantine or through COVID or whatever it may be, just a couple technique cues to kind of get you back into the rhythm, really focusing on your form so we come back, you know, bigger, faster, stronger. So uh, let's get right into it. We're going to get right into um, a full body warm up and then we're going to hit up um, have our workout. So the first Warm up exercise that we're going to do is called our world's greatest stretch. So we're going to get down into that nice deep lunge, both hands are on the inside of the front foot. We're going to take our inside hand and we're going to rotate it in towards the front leg and then back down. Now I'm just going to pivot a little bit better. So rotating in towards the front leg and back down. We're going to do five on each side. If you need a little bit more, bend the inside elbow, try and take it down to Once you're done your five, you're going to switch over to your other side, really opening up those hips. If you need to drop the back knee, that's 110% okay. Try and keep the hip and the knee extended during this exercise. So we're going into five, roll through the stretch on the other side, bending that elbow and trying to take it down to the instep of the foot if you need a little bit more of a challenge. So once you're done your five, we're going to go to a nice tall plank. Feet are nice and wide. Hips are nice and square to the ground. We're going to go to shoulder taps. So one hand to opposite shoulder. Try and get that one to two second static balance and back down. Over to the opposite shoulder. One to two second static balance and down. We're going to go back and forth until we've done five reps on each side. 10 all together. So as you're doing this, try not to let your hips sway side to side. Keep them nice and square towards the ground. So that means that you have to make a wider stance with your feet and do so. All right, next we're going to go into our 90-90 alternating shin bumps. So to set up, your front leg is going to be at 90 degrees and your back leg is going to be at 90 degrees. Making sure that your knee and the heel of the front foot are not smooshed together, that you have some space in between them to allow your hips to move. So now we're going to rotate our torso so our shoulders are angling over top of our tibia or over our lower leg. You want to try and sit as evenly as you can during this exercise. So from here, what we're going to do is stay nice and long to the core, nice and neutral. We're going to take our shoulders, we're going to over top of that tibia, we're going to sit back, then we're going to externally rotate the back leg, internally rotate the front leg in order for us to alternate over to the other side. I don't want to see any cheating and hands, you know, go back like this and we're just switching sides like go, so, like that. This is a active mobility exercise. So once you get over to the other side, Press that front knee down to the ground, back knee down to the ground, hinge over top of that front leg and back, and then we're kind of windshield wiping over towards the other side. So we're going to do three on each 
each side. You might feel that this internally rotated position on the back leg is slightly uncomfortable. That might mean that you got a little bit of tight hip going on. And last one, alternating back over to the other side. All right, next we're going to hit up a low plank position. In our low plank position, we're going to have our feet once again nice and wide. Glutes are squeezed, core is tight. We're going to reach one arm forward and down. Other arm forward and down. Lift one leg, down. Other leg and down. So arm, arm, leg, leg is one. And we have three rounds of the whole together. So two more rounds. Feet are nice and wide. Arm, arm, leg, leg. One more round. Arm, arm, leg, and leg. Next, we're going to go back to our side, and we're going to take a side plank position. So from here, our shoulders, our hips, and our ankles are all going to be aligned so the knees are bent and they are slightly in front of our body. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to press our bottom knee down into the ground. We're going to lift up from the hip into a clamshell, and then we're going to lower back down. So the top leg opens the up as well. So making sure elbow is stacked right underneath the shoulder, lifting through the core, pressing that bottom knee down into the ground, holding for about three to four seconds, and then back down. So you should feel all the work in the bottom hip. If you happen to have mini bands or any sort of band at home, you can put it around uh, above your knee and you can open up into that band, which will get the top working as well. So we're going to do eight all together. I'm going to do four on this side just because I'm chatting and I'm giving cues and reminders so that we get to our warm up and we can get right into our workout. So once again, shoulders, hips, and ankles all aligned. Knees are slightly in front of the body. Elbows directly underneath the shoulder. Pushing that bottom knee down into the ground. Lifting and back down. Lifting and back down. So we're doing eight on each side. Really push that bottom knee down to the ground. Feel the side of the glute really get fired up on this exercise. You don't need any sort of resistance in order to really feel this exercise. Alright, so once we're done our eight, we're going to go into a so, for our group bridge, we're going to be lying on our back. Hips and knees are going to be bent. Feet are flat on the floor. So, now for your group bridge, if you're the type of individual when you do a group bridge, you feel it maybe more in your hamstring and not necessarily a lot in your glute. I'm going to give you a little cue to help you with that to really help you engage your glutes a little bit more. So, when you're doing a group bridge and you maybe feel it more in your hamstring than you're doing your glute, I want you to do this. Think that you have two pieces of paper underneath your feet. And you're trying to push those two pieces of paper away from you as you're lifting up your hips. So you're going to be pressing your big toe down to the ground. What that's going to do is that it's going to slightly activate the quads, which is going to deactivate the hamstring because they are antagonist muscles. They do the opposite action. So if our quads are active, then our hamstrings have to relax. Our glute is our only other muscle that does hip extension. So therefore, if our hamstrings are turned off by pressing you know, our big toe down to the ground and thinking of pushing those pieces of paper away from us, we're going to get a little bit more glute engagement. Now make sure your heels still stay down on the ground as you're doing this glute bridge. I just want you to think about pressing the big toe down to the ground and you know, kind of statically pushing two pieces of paper away. So now that I've given you that little bit of a cue, let's get into our group bridges. We're going to do 10 all together with a two to three second hold at the top. So pressing that big toe down to the ground, lifting up those hips, holding for two to three seconds, and back down. Lifting, holding for two to three, and back down. Press that big 
into our sumo squat to stand. So what that's going to look like is we're going to take a stance just wider than shoulder width apart. From here, we're going to push our hips back like a Romanian deadlift. You should feel a nice stretch in the hamstring, maybe a little bit down into the calf. There's a nice slight bend in the knees. From here, you're going to take your hands either to your shins, your ankles, the tops of your from here, you're going to push your knees to the outsides of your arms and sit into that nice deep squat. From here, thumbs go back, then we push your deep heels and step. So really try and separate that deep squat position, thumbs go back, then we push your heels and step. I usually see it very 
synonymous, bringing the arms up as an individual is rising up out of their deep squat. Try and really break it down. So push your hips back, hands down to the ankles, push those knees out. Take a couple seconds in this nice deep squat if you need to. Thumbs go back, push through these heels and stands. So we have six all together, six all together at your own tempo. If you need a little bit more time in the bottom of your squat, maybe you want to kind of scour, shift your weight back and forth. That's totally fine. Making sure we come to full extension at the top, knees and hips. One more. It's one, two, three, a nice full three seconds. 
So here we go, driving those knees up, sitting into our squat for three, two, one, and drive up, right back down. Pulling for one, two, three, two. Back down, pulling one, two, three, three. Back down, one, two, three, four. Pull one, two, three, five. Pull one, two, three, six. Two more. Pull one, two, three, seven. Last one. Pull one, two, three, and eight. Very nice. Nice pull. So make sure when you're in your bottom range of motion that we're not relaxing. Our hips are still engaged, our core is still engaged. It's a very active position. All right, exercise number two in this block that we're doing is called a Z press. Now, I have dumbbells here, which I'm going to use. You can use kettlebells, you can use a weighted backpack, you can use a barbell, whatever you may have. So now a Z press is done in a seated position. So in this position, you are going to take your dumbbells and we're going to perform an overhead press. So now the reason for doing this seated is when someone maybe lacks some range of motion in their shoulder or perhaps they have tight lats so they can't quite get that fully overhead extended position. What individuals tend to do if they can't get that, maybe they can only get to there, they push their hips forward to almost compensate for that range of motion that they don't have in the shoulder. So now by sitting on the ground, we take the hips out of the equation completely. So in doing the Z-press, you have to make sure the cues I'm going to give you is that your rib cage stays down. So I don't want the rib cage flared up towards the ceiling, I want the rib cage down. Now, by thinking of that cue in depressing the rib cage or keeping it down, you should feel a slight posterior tilt of the tailbone. So almost like how a dog gets scared and tucks their tail in between their leg, in between their legs. That's more or less exactly what you should feel. So you should feel the upper part of your core and the lower part of your core with that one cue in keeping the rib cage down. Okay? So we take the hips out of the equation. So we're not allowed to compensate through them. So we're working on overhead stability and overhead strength here. So taking our dumbbells up to the shoulders, making sure that rib cage stays down. We're going to press and back. Going for eight, two. And then the heel is your third spot. So it's almost forming a triangle. 
When you set up for your squat, I want you to actively, mindfully think about those three places in your foot, okay? That way you're displacing the weight evenly amongst the foot, okay? From there, what I want you to think about doing is screwing your foot into the ground, okay? So now what I mean by that is when we have those three points of contact in our squat, I want you to think of externally rotating from the hips and screwing your feet down into the ground. So we're not letting our toes point more outwards. You know, we're not in a ballet class here. I want you to think of getting a nice solid base with your foot, get some grip, almost like our feet are like talons, and then externally rotate from the hips so that you feel your glutes activated before you even start your squat. Okay, so our glutes are turned on, that means our pelvis is sitting a lot more level, which means we're going to have better core engagement, okay? So it all starts from the ground up. So here we go, that was <laughs> 2 minutes and 18 seconds, but a very important technique too, okay? Especially if we're getting back to the gym and wanting to get back on, on those strength gains, okay? So back into our quad squat, let's grab our weight, whatever it may be, get those three points of contact, screw your feet into the ground, and here we go, push those hips back, sit them down for three, two, one, one. And back down, three, two, one, two. Three, two, one, three. Three, two, one, four. Three, two, one, five. Three, two, one, six, two more, three, two, one, seven, last one, three, two, one, and eight. Woo! Oh man, that little thought, I tell you, changes the exercise completely. All right, here we go, into our feet press, grab your dumbbells, barbell, whatever it may be, and we're pressing overhead for eight. Two, one, 
six, two more, three, two, one, seven, last one, three, two, one, and eight. Very nice. Much better set. I'm assuming, I can't see, but I'm assuming it was a much better set. I'm hoping it was a better set. All right. Last set of resume press. Toss it up. Here we go. Pressing for eight. One. Two. Here, I have my bench. 
So I'm going to take my dumbbell, and I'm going to have three points of support. So my knee, my foot, and then obviously my hand is going to be on the bench. So from here, hot quit. What part of the body is a row initiated with? Give me a couple seconds. Throw out answers. Elbow back, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what you're saying, okay? Maybe some of you are right, wrong, not too sure, but a row is initiated with the posterior aspect of the shoulder, okay? So, in order to properly set up for a row, we are going to make our first pull with the back part of the shoulder in order to set the shoulder blade, okay? So, setting means putting the shoulder in the most optimal position to develop strength, okay? So, we're taking that shoulder, we're retracting it and depressing it back down. So, the part where a row is initiated from is the posterior aspect of the shoulder. Because if we initiate it with the elbow, and our elbow drives our movement. Look at all this nasty internal rotation I'm getting in this shoulder here. This internal rotation is not going to make for a healthy, happy shoulder. Okay, so we need to set that shoulder blade, pull with the back part of the shoulder, and then the elbow finishes off the movement. Okay, so on your bench, box, whatever you may have, we're going to do eight rows. So, tuck that shoulder blade back and down, and then the elbow finishes the row, okay? So we can have eight repetitions of that exercise on each side. So eight Romanian deadlifts, eight single arm supported rows. Now, if you don't have a bench or anything like that, maybe you're doing all of your workouts from home, even better. It's just gonna make it a little bit harder for you. Take a nice split stance, and you're going to be doing your rows unsupported, okay? So you're gonna require a little bit more core engagement for that as well, all right? So let's get into our Romanian deadlift for eight reps, all right? So you got your weight, set yourself up, pull the shoulder blades back, core is nice and tight, push the nose hips back, and hold it through for one. over to the other side. Alright, 
30 more seconds, we'll grab one more quick sip of water. Hopefully everybody's enjoying this workout so far. We're learning a couple things. Maybe a couple technique things we haven't heard of before. Maybe an analogy I've kind of spewed out that maybe just is kind of resonating you with you a little bit more. All right, here we go. That's a minute 30 into our second set. Into our deadlift. Here we go. Push those hips back. One. Two. Make sure you go to our Facebook page, um, Edmonton Garrison Military uh, Fitness and Sports, and we have a tons of links on there to our YouTube page that has a bunch of videos of live stream classes that we recorded and posted um, over the months where you know everybody was kind of staying home, so on and so forth. We were you know in our basements and so on and so forth, doing videos, trying to help everybody you know move a little bit during that time. So if you're looking for more workouts. Feel free to look back into some. If you're looking for some mobility stuff, maybe you're feeling a little bit tight. My coworker Scott has done some awesome mobility videos, so I would highly suggest checking those out. All right, look at that. I, I can talk for a minute thirty. Easy peasy. Okay, here we go. Last set. Romanian deadlift with our dumbbells. Here we go. Pushing the hips back. Thank you. 
minute 30, probably a little bit more, because I gotta explain. The last two exercises, almost there. Holy oh, man, that time goes by so fast. All right, last two exercises. I'm gonna give you, are both loaded, but they can also be done unloaded, which means without weight, okay? So just give me a quick second here. I'm just gonna tilt this down a little bit more. Sorry, I'm moving my screen on you. There we go, just so we have Yeah. 
and reaching for those toes, going for another set of steps. So you press the third feet, reach it up, and back down. Two. Three. Four.